Hello, my name is Mr. Tsakalian and welcome to Buried. Buried is an interactive story. The plot will change based on the choices you make. The story is broken into five chapters, play straight through at your own pace. Or at your own pace. There's no waiting and no pauses. Enjoy and choose wisely. So here we are. Here it is. Here we go. Begin. open my eyes and the first thing I want to do is scream. I'm flat on my back and everything seems to hurt. The trees overhead look familiar and it's a clear night sky, almost beautiful, except for the fact that this means I've been out cold for at least six hours. But there's something wrong. I don't remember what, but something happened and my head, my god, my head hurts and a ringing in my ears. Was there an accident? An explosion, I think. I remember Dennis screaming but after that, I can't remember. As I sit up, I notice that my hard hat has been thrown off. I look around the area, but it's not there. <clears throat> it feels strange to go anywhere without my hard hat, but I've got to find the other members of the crew. They could be in danger. Do I search for the hard hat, or forget the hat and search for a crew? I look around, but it's not. I'm, so, if I, if I don't look for the crew, they could be in danger. If I find the hat, it could save me from an attack from behind. So, in an actual situation, I wouldn't go looking for the hat. I would just search. I decide my hat could wait until I figure out what's going on. I get up and take a look around the logging site. I smell something burning. I don't hear any engine running. Wait, something isn't right. Was it the bulldozer? Maybe the damn thing overheated for the last time. Maybe the engine finally blew. What a mess. Well, maybe I'm jumping to conclusions. Only one way to find out, I guess. I walk over to the center of the logging site and don't like what I see. What do you see? Oh dear. That's gotta be a bit of a pain to pull that one out, isn't it? The logging site looks like a bomb was detonated right in the center. I don't know where to start. The one load we had managed to stack on a truck for the next, for the day is overturned. The trailer bent and the logs hanging off the back. Where the hell is everyone? My head is killing me and this ringing in my ears. I can't hear anything. Not birds, not my footsteps, nothing. It makes me wonder if I hit my head after my hard hat flew off. I run through a quick mental checklist to make sure my brain is still working. My name is Roger Hastings. I am 41 years old. The year is 2017. I own a small logging company and we've been logging in this strip of Kentucky woodland for almost a month now. Okay, so my brain works and that's a relief, but it also makes me fearful because something is certainly not right here. I look around the logging site, my mind trying to figure out what has happened. Just about every piece of equipment has been overturned or tilted. Do I look at the debris or do I look at the truck? Hmm, which, which, which one should I really look at? The tip of the truck, the tip of the truck. Uh, the truck, maybe? Or is someone still in the truck? The truck, the hitch is completely broken, like it was blown off by an explosion or a really bad accident. Had there been an explosion, all of the fuel in the site would have started a fire. True. <laughs> Excuse me, but <clears throat> there's no charring, no burning, nothing. I walk through the area where Dennis had been working. From the looks of it, he'd been moving slowly. He'd only taken down four trees today. His metal lunchbox is open, an indicator that, that he had been taking an early break. But he's not here, no one is. Where the hell is everyone? I could try to make a call on my cell phone, but his battery is already running really low. Not that it matters, but the reception is crap out here. Let's try yelling out first, before we go using up the power of the cell phone. Hey guys, where's everyone? Tony, Dennis, Frank, Joe? Their names fall flat among the wreckage. I get nothing back other than scaring away a, scaring away a few birds overhead. Might as well start walking and try to find some answers. The highway is almost a mile back through the woods, down the gravel road we used to reach the site. Maybe the crew ran that way for help. But why would they have left me? Were they scared? Out of sorts? Maybe we can catch up to them, but with my truck turned over its side, it looks like I'll be walking. My 
God, I can't even remember when, what I was doing before waking up on my back. Wait, what's that underneath the bulldozer? Oh my God, it's a leg! It has to be ever Tony or Dennis. The bulldozer looks unstable, like it might roll some more. It might not be safe to get close, but at the same time, I can't just leave him there. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Hey! I yell, are you okay? Are you alive? I skip over the stray logs and wrecked and wrecked equipment to get closer. Seeing the dozer teetered, teeter makes me think maybe I should have grabbed my hat. Uh, I can see a bit more of the leg. The jeans are soaked in blood. I recognize the work boots. It's clearly Tony. His leg is bent at an impossible angle, nearly crushed flat. The closer I get, the more apparent it becomes that Tony didn't survive. I don't think I should... I think I should leave it just in case something happens. There's nothing I can do for him now. I start to back away slowly. In my shock, I stumble back, suddenly trip over one of the stray logs. I bang my head hard on one of the logs as I fall. Instantly, I can feel a massive lump form in the back of my head. Oh, damn! Why didn't I grab my... Why didn't I grab my hard hat? Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have grabbed the hard hat. But what hurts more is the realization that Tony's dead. Looking at him, I feel something rising up my throat, and I don't know if it's a scream or vomit. But I have to push it away. If I lose my cool right now, there are too many questions that will go unanswered. Shit! I can't believe this, Tony. He had two boys. He coached his oldest son's baseball team. He was the hardest worker I had and was one of the most honest and reliable men I knew. This isn't right. I can't stay here. I have to find Dennis, Frank and Joe. I have to find out what happened here. Oh, the mystery thickens. So I think that bomb went probably cut off. So maybe it was some kind of activist group that went a little bit too extreme? As I walk through the stacks of logs from the last from the last week or so of work, everything feels frozen. This high-pitched sound in my ears is terrible. It keeps happening every few seconds and sounds like it's coming from far away. I can't help but wonder, is it my ears or is it something else? The silence out here is creepy and there's a smell like the atmosphere after a bad summer storm. I might as well admit it, I'm a little scared. Everyone is missing, and it's qu dead quiet out here. There doesn't even seem to be a breeze to rustle the leaves and branches. My right knee hurts like hell. My head was hurting so bad before that I never even noticed the pain in my knee. I must have heard it during the w well, during the what? The accident? Or... Wait, is that Dennis? I see him sitting on the ground, motionless, about 30 feet away. Dennis, I yell. Dennis, can you hear me? Dennis lets out a shout, like someone waking from a nightmare. He then looks back at me from the ground. Yeah, Roger, I hear you. He hollers back as I head over to him. Dennis is built like a wrestler and has the tough personality to match. But in this moment, he looks disoriented and even a little agnoxious. Though I'm glad to see him. The fear on his usually confident face is alarming. What the hell happened? What's going on? Missing? Dennis says. Where do you think they went? I'm not sure, but it has me pretty freaked out. Something's not right here. Still sitting on the ground, he looks out in the woods as if he's just now understanding the severity of the situation. The equipment was overturned. The, the dozers too, I say, whipping my forehead. You okay? I ask him. <clears throat> yeah. Just shaking up. Me too. This might be the most intimate conversation Dennis and I have ever had. While he and I have always been on good terms, we've never been particularly close. I've always respected him though. Sure, he's come to work a few times looking like he'd been in a bar fight the night before, but I've also seen him do an enthusiastic impression of a dinosaur as he played with Tony's kids while they waited for their dad to finish up his shaft. So he's a good guy really. It's then that it hits me. Dennis and Tony were good friends. Oh no. I'm sure I'm not sure I want to rattle him with news of Tony's death right now. Not before we know what's going on, but he has a right to know. It'd be terrible if I if I kept it from him. Cause then you think that keeping things from him and then you might become a suspect to me? 
I mean, he might think that I was responsible. Cause I'm, he might think I'm trying to hide the fact that his best friend's dead. He might blame me. So I, I'm going to tell him. You are up front with Dennis about Tony. Dennis' eyes fixate on me, startled. He was crushed under the dozer, I say. Dennis pauses for a moment, like he's trying to understand what I said. His eyes narrow, and his bottom lip quivers. Shit, he says, and I can tell that he's fighting back tears. He and Tony are being tight, almost like brothers. Hey, he adds quickly, as if he's trying to escape the reality of Tony's death. Did you see that light? No, I say. What did you see? I don't even know, Roger, he says. It was like this flare of white light. It came right up out of the ground like an explosion. So there was an explosion. So it could have been a terrorist or an activist group. Um, maybe it was some equipment or... This was no equipment, Dennis. This was no equipment, Dennis interrupts, agitated. This huge ball of light came right out of the damn ground. Out of the ground. So what did it look like? Like looking into the sun. It just feels like someone stabbed me in the eyes with a hot knife. When? I'm not sure. But I had finished about 10 trees for the day. It was about to stop. Oh, sorry. <coughs> it's 11 o'clock and I am tired. <laughs> oh, where was I? I'm not sure, but I had finished about 10 trees for the night and was about to top one. That's when it happened. You were almost done with 10 trees? Yeah says looking at the ground you know i wouldn't want to take a lunch break until i was done and that's when that light blew up why you don't believe me may as well don't want to get him annoyed or anything at me you you saw what you saw i think to myself he has no reason to lie about this my god are you okay yeah i'm fine he says but if, if i'm being honest he scared me pretty bad and if it's all the same to you, I'd like to get the hell out of here. We both stand up and start heading towards the road. It isn't until we start moving that I see Dennis is wounded. His right side is caught in the blood, the red seeping through his blue work shirt. There are splatters of it here and there, but also a very large red splotch that makes me worry. Oh, I should have asked that one. I've been better. I don't know how much longer I can stay on my feet, he says. What happened? I'm not sure. I must have gotten thrown or hurt somehow from that light. It's then that I notice that the strange ringing noise is still filling the air. Hey, I say, do you hear that high-pitched ringing noise every once in a while? Dennis looks scared when I ask him this question, and he just nods. I thought it was just me, he says. He looks out of sorts and uncertain. I've never seen him like this before. It's obvious that he's looking for some reassurance. Even though I'm his boss, there's something very unnerving about this. So I'm not actually the one in charge of the whole thing. So I'm the boss. So even though I'm the boss, I actually don't know what's going on. I'm sure I sound scared, but I don't really care. I look to Dennis and I see that my confusion and fear have seeped into him. And is that disappointment in his expression as well? I think so. It's as, if it's, it's as if he expects me to be stronger, to assure him that we're fine and nothing out of the ordinary has happened. We both start moving forward and don't say another word. Did you try to call Frank? Dennis asks. Oh my god. <laughs> I know he had his cell on him today. Not yet. Luckily, I still have some battery left. I pull up my cell and call Frank. Happy I didn't make that call to Dennis earlier, so that was a good decision. It rings, but he doesn't pick up. Bad he did. But then I hear his phone go off, behind the stack of logs. Dennis and I give, give each other a look. As the phone goes to voicemail, I hang up, and we walk behind the logs to find Frank's phone on the ground, abandoned. We look around for Frank, but could find nothing, not a single trace. It's then that I notice something really odd, a ten foot wide hole in the ground, right near where the phone was. There's no stray piles of removed dirt or rocks. It's clean, smoothly dug, cut in, into the earth. Wide, but only a few feet deep. It looks unnatural, like the ground was just deleted, no shovels or diggers used. Dennis walks over to it. 
This looks like the same kind of hole where I saw that light from, come from the ground. He muses to himself. I say nothing. My mind is spinning, but I don't know what to think. We need to get out of here, Dennis mutters. At that moment, that ringing noise carries through the forest again, sending a shiver down my spine. So are these, like, aliens that popped out of the earth? Kind of like the... Uh, that film. Oh my god, what's it called? Oh, the aliens come out of the ground. The a uh, the day the earth stood still, or War of the World, War of the Worlds, wasn't it? War of the World. I'm pretty sure that was what it's called. But that ringing sound could be a clue to where the rest of the crew went. No, let's check out that sound. You decided to check out the sound. Something is not right, I say. And if there's a mechanical noise like that. You think someone is out there? He asks. Maybe. I think we should at least check it out. They might be able to help. Yeah. You go right ahead, he says with a grin. I'll be here waiting for you. Better hurry, though. That's very suspicious. Dennis doesn't look like he's in the best shape to be trouncing around the forest, but we need some answers right away, too. Why was he smiling? Why, why, why would he be smiling? That's a bit... I'd bring him. I don't, I don't trust him to be on his own. He might do something. No, you're coming with me. I bend over and hoist him up against my shoulder. He resists just barely, and then gives in. <laughs> he's looking at me like he's terrified of me now, making a moan in his throat. I start moving through the woods quickly. With no idea where the rest of the crew is, I worry they could be in danger. Or dead. Every tree out here looks exactly the same. I grew up in the country and can find my way around the forest without much of a problem, but I'm feeling dizzy. I'm leaning against a tree when I see something that has no business being out here. Our logging crew has been out here for three weeks, and I've never seen it before. It's a small building, sort of like mixture of a shack and a bunker. It looks to be made of concrete, but moss, weeds, and plain old erosion also make it look sort of mystical. It looks like something out of a demented version of a medieval fantasy movie. What the hell is this? Dennis asks. I have no idea. Some old power station? An old power station in the middle of nowhere, or an old bunker. Or maybe it's a place where they used to do secret experiments. Who knows? But we'll find out in the next episode. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, and I will see you later. Bye bye.